Hey guys, um, in this video I'll just be going through a question which is as follows. Two blocks, A and B, of weights 500 newtons and 1000 newtons um, respectively are placed on an inclined plane. The blocks are connected by a string, which is here, parallel to the plane. The coefficient of friction between the inclined plane and block A is 0.15 so for this we have 0 0.15 and for B the coefficient of friction between the two surfaces is 0 0.4 so here we we'll just follow this across and mu for that surface is equal to 0 0.4 the question is asking us to find the inclination of the plane when motion is about to take place and to calculate the tension within the string now, um, conceptually, there's something to understand here. Because we've got two coefficients of friction here, um, the, the object with the lowest coefficient, coefficient of friction is going to slide first. Um, so, object number A, um, as the incline starts from a flat uh, surface and then inclines up, uh, this object is going to slide first before this object slides. Um, so, initially we'll see the object A starting to slide down the incline. Um, the thing that stops it from sliding down the incline will be the tension inside the string. Uh, so, we could draw a free body diagram of that where we've got the tension in the string holding block A from sliding down the incline. Um, so the way to start this question is firstly with a free body diagram and we'll be drawing a free body diagram of both of these two blocks and we will assume that there will be a tension in the string because we know that block A is going to slide first because it's got a lower coefficient of friction compared to block B. Okay, so let's start with the free body diagrams. Okay, so for our free body diagram Um, we'll draw our incline and we have block A on the surface and block A will have um, a normal force which is acting upwards we'll have a tension force because of the string pulling it up the incline. The block will tend to move down the incline because we want the motion, the motion of that block is going to be down the incline when the angle is large enough. So the impending motion will be towards the left. And friction will go in the opposite direction to this impending motion, so it will go up the incline. Okay, uh, also, uh, so we know that block A has got a mass, or sorry, a weight of 500 newtons. We'll assume that it's acting down. Sorry, our weight. And the weight of block A is going to be 500 newtons, so that was given to us. Okay, now if the plane has got an incline here of theta, which we do not know yet, um, it's what we're trying to figure out, um, but this angle here will also be equal to theta. The weight force will be at an angle theta there. Alright, so that's the free body diagram for um, block number A. Um, and we currently have one, two, three unknowns. Um, and we'll have three equations that we can use to solve. Actually, it's going to be four unknowns. So the friction force, the normal force, the tension force, and also this angle theta here as well. Okay. We can also draw a free body diagram for block number B or block B. So here we'll draw the second block 
Um, block B also has an impending motion down the incline. So that's also going to be moving down the incline. Okay. We'll have a normal force for that block as well. We'll call that N B. The motion of block B is towards uh, downhill, so friction is going to act uphill. Um, this one here was called N uh, F A, so this would here be called F B. We'll have a weight force which acts down, and the weight force will be equal to 1,000. Newtons. So that was given in the question. Here we've got our angle theta. Um, so the weight force will act always uh, or vertically up and down. Um, and we also now have our tension force, which is within the string. And the tension force will try to pull the block down the incline. So we now have two free body diagrams. A free body diagram for block A and a free body diagram for block B. From these two free body diagrams we will be able to uh, have a look at the summation of forces in the x direction, the summation of forces in the y direction and the friction coefficient for each of the um, two situations. There are going to be two assumptions, well yeah that we're going to be using for this set of equations. Uh, the first assumption is that the static friction coefficient so mu s for block number A is the same as the kinetic friction coefficient for block number A. Um, we need to assume that um, in order to make assumptions about the friction. We'll assume that the static friction from block A is the same as the kinetic friction for block A. Uh, six, so this is equal to uh, 0 0.15. So that was from the question. Second, so the static coefficient of friction for block B is equal to the kinetic friction coefficient for block B. That's going to be equal to 0 0.4. Um, and then that also makes the assumption that this friction coefficient here um, is going to be the same for the static and the kinetic case. Um, less important for block B, but it's more important for block A because um, it's already in a state of being able to be in a, a kinetic state of motion, um, but it should be okay just using our static friction coefficient. Okay, so those two assumptions will be made. Um, in the next video, what I'll be doing is we'll create the equations of equilibrium for both of these two cases of, um, of free body diagrams, so both of these free body diagrams. Alright, so we'll see you in the next video. Hopefully that's been helpful so far, um, and I'll see you then. See ya.